very much. It's really a great honor to receive this honorary doctor out of your hands. And Greg was so kind to mention my biography. Oh, you're so. And uh, indeed, when we had today the meeting with your um, Prime Minister, he mentioned that the birthplace in Vietnam is only 100 kilometers away from Phnom Penh. But even so close, it is a long way from this small city in Vietnam during the Vietnam War to be here today with you. And indeed, I was born in 1973 during the Vietnam War. And I was an orphanage, an orphan in Catholic orphanage. And my parents decided to adopt, in addition to their daughters, a third child out of the war. So to some extent, given the current discussion, particularly in Europe, I was a refugee of a war. And I got the chance of the life, of my life, thanks to my country, embedded in the European Union. Indeed, I grew up in Germany. Thanks to the pressure of my father, I went to school. I have to had to work hard. I went to the university as a military doctor. I could make my civil PhD and then I could start a political career, even I look not typically as a German politician. I became deputy prime minister in one of the most beautiful states in Lower Saxony and later then federal health minister and minister of economics, vice chancellor in Germany. And that is a story not of a person, but this is a story what you can achieve if you have a country in peace, in democracy, and if you have a society which emphasized what you are doing today, education. Because in the time being, in the 17th and beginning of the 80s, many refugees came out of Southeast Asia to Europe, to Germany. And even the situation of the refugees today is even more difficult than the situation was for the Vietnamese refugees. The country managed it, the society managed it, and the refugees could integrate themselves because even their scientific studies. They emphasized always to their kids how important education is. And if you look at the now next second and third generation in Germany based out of the Vietnamese refugees, you can see that they all have higher education. They learned what their parents told them and teach them by the time being. And it was possible because Germany lives after the Second World War, a horrible war as well, in peace with his neighbors, embedded in a strong European Union. So I'm quite happy and proud that we have, of course, the German ambassador here today, but as well the French ambassador, because that shows how strong the community is inside the European Union. And even they are facing today some discussions. If they are only an economic union or really a union of values. I'm totally convinced that the European Union even will manage the challenges they are facing today thanks to the fact that they are, of course, a community of values. And I mention this because I'm today here in Cambodia. Cambodia is a fast-growing country with a young society, strong economy, but as well, we discussed this morning some issues you will have, for example, inside the ASEAN community. And I will encourage you to go this way further, to have the same strong community we have in Europe with the European Union, once with the ASEAN community. And of course, the EU started at the beginning, first and foremost, as an economic project. But even then, it was always based on a political idea. And that's the same with the ASEAN community. And that is my appeal, that you, of course, focus on the economic challenges, 
that you will solve the challenges, that you will face the challenges, but that you at the same time never will forget that you have, of course, a political idea behind the ASEAN community. And even we are talking now about the single market beginning end of the year. And even we are discussing custom issues, the question of free labor market, movement of labor. That are day-to-day -day discussions. But we should never forget that the ASEAN idea is really a great idea and your fathers and your grandfathers have once the idea based on this political idea. And please do not make the mistake some other regions made in the past when they wanted to create a multilateral body. They made the mistake that they focused too much on laws, on passing acts, on increasing bureaucracy. The founder of the ASEAN community, in their founding document, has had only five paragraphs, whereas even a simple trade agreement is even more than 500 pages. So if we really, based on this idea, focus on this idea of a community, a community of values, in order to create a space, a region for people to live in freedom, democracy, human rights, press of media, and that you then have the opportunity to start your own life, to make your own career, and hopefully not far away from your mother's and father's home, but here in your home country in itself. And 30 and 40 years ago, many people left here the region to reach out for their luck, for themselves and their families in Europe, in Germany. Today, thanks to the development in the past decades, here even in your country, no one will leave his home country. He will stay. You will fight for your nation, for your people, and hopefully once for the ASEAN community. And now I left politics, and so I'm working for the International Organization for Public-Private Cooperation, the World Economic Forum. And if we can facilitate, support the idea of the ASEAN community to come to a single market, to have visa freedom once in your region, to create foreign direct investment, then it's our idea of public-private cooperation between the countries, the governments, and the private sector, but always having in mind that if we would like to achieve this, we should not forget that even we are in World Economic Forum, that we are fighting again for a political idea. So that is my message in order to say thank you to all of you and this is our common responsibility to use this to create a similar space I got in the past from my parents, from my country and from the EU that we can offer the same to your generation and to your next generation. So again, thank you very much for the great honor and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Excellency Dr. Russler, for those enlightening remarks. And once again, congratulations. We are so pleased to have you here today and to confer this honor to you, as you are well-deserving indeed. Now I am delighted once again to welcome His Excellency Dr. Kao Kim Horn, founder, chairman of the Board of Trustees, and president of the University of Cambodia, to deliver his closing remarks to this special honorary doctorate degree ceremony. Please give him a warm welcome. Well, I just want to say thank you very much for your accepting speech, which you provide a source of inspiration for the young people, for the students, for the students in Cambodia. For, uh, because given the fact that your humble beginning, your humble background, and you have led a life to where you are today, successful life, and a life of continuing successes, of course, through hard work, dedication, and commitment, so that's something that we all can uh, be proud of, uh, of your achievements. And we want to uh, pass on this message to the young people in Cambodia that there's no substitute for hard work. And that's why we honor you today. 
So with that, thank you very much. And I want to thank all uh, Excellencies and everyone for being here this evening to join the units of Cambodia in honoring our guest honor, and that is Excellency Dr. Philip Russell. Thank you very much. Thank you kindly for your always insightful remarks, Excellency Dr. Gao. This truly has been a special occasion, and we thank each and every one of you for joining the celebration today. Now I would like to invite all of our honored guests and our audience members to join the stage for a photo session. Once again, thank you all for joining today. Somakun. <laughs>